Okay, so I'm going to deal with this area here, and I'll show you where that is on the photo from the uh, prototype location. So this grass patch, there's a pole which goes right in here, which I'll put tall grass around just to, to, to kind of hide that, the way the pole plants into the ground, and another pole from the overpass plants here. But this part here is just a grass patch. This here, I'm not sure of yet, because I don't exactly know where the fence is. So. When I get the plate that I build Ipex Plastics on, I want to build it on a quarter inch plate. I think I mentioned it before because I want to take the whole plate out and work on the building and all the details on my bench and then just drop it into place, pull it out. You know the routine, right? So that's why I'm doing that. So I want it to fit nice and flush here and then uh, further down a bit more. So it's going to fit in here, but I don't know exactly where the fence is going to go. So I can just... Uh, fill this in later and give it the same treatment as this but I want to show you so I'm going to do this this pole I'll put in last I don't need to put that in right now but you can see where the sidewalk is that needs another wash I'm going to seal that and add another wash to that and lighten it up a bit to look more like this sidewalk but I want to just put dirt around here this I'm not worried about I just painted it earth brown with some really thin acrylic paint there and then I'm going to static grass that so it's like a lawn. And then I'm going to do a lot of this patchwork. I'll do a couple passes with the static grass and then I'll come in with the airbrush to soften the edges. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do that. So right now what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to do some of the dirt around this area. That's sort of worn out a bit. And this is matte medium straight from the bottle with a very wet brush. And I'm going to dress it with some soil that's been sifted. Just like that, because that'll be a little bit exposed. And then when I put the columns in, I'll be able to dress in, just pinch and stab some tall grass around the base of the pole that maybe the, uh, the ground maintenance guy missed or whatever. So this is just some sifted dirt here like this, see? See, there's a... There's some finer stuff in there I probably want to pinch. So it's sifted dirt. I usually do this in the summer. I top up my stock. And, uh, lay it right onto matte medium. I'm going to let that dry and then vacuum that off. And then I'm going to static grass all this area here. Okay. You know, I'll just say about these static grass applicators, sometimes they work like a dream, eh? you notice that? So this is a mixture of 4 mil and 7 mil, and I find that, that anything larger than that, uh, it's a bit of half fail, you know. That's why I pinch and stab 12 mil, but this is 4 mil with a bit of 7 mixed in, and I don't know, man. It uh, might have something to do with humidity, too, and the temperature and everything. But this, like, I just gave it that pass, and it just looks awesome. Like, it's probably the best grass, short piece of grass turf that I've ever done on River Road so far. Just, I can't believe how well it went down. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm not worried too far back there, because, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let that be thin there. But this here, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. This thing's helter-skelter. Like... 
Look, I know people make their own and that's good. And, and I bet you they have the same experiences. You know, they'll make one and then they'll be like, oh, it doesn't work that good. And then one day it works awesome. And then, you know, you forget about it, right? But this just worked beautifully. I, I can't believe how good that went down. So that's going to look really cool. And it took me, how long did that take me to do? So it's looking pretty cool, eh? I'm really liking how this scene is developing here. Okay, so I just quickly vacuumed that off and I just love this. You know, I mean, I'm not always after this kind of, you know, manicured lawn look, but this is a business here now, Ipex, and this is sort of the side of their building and the front's around the corner. So, you know, they try to keep the, you know, their corporation looking up to snuff, right? Now I can come in here with an airbrush and uh, with some, you know, light yellow brown and just patch that out with, you know, with paint, right? Or I can do it with other colors of static grass with just stab in some matte medium thin with a brush randomly, right? Once again, random, right? And then just re like do another pass of different color. You can do it that way too, but I'm just going to use the airbrush there. But I love the way this patch dirt is here because when the sun comes, like in the summer, it really cooks here on this side of the overpass. Over here, it's under shade all the time, and there's dirt further back in the tree there, but they're made for the shade, and there's no grass growing there. So uh, now that that's done and drying, I want to just start ballasting this. This is sifted limestone. Um, and the nice thing about limestone is the larger chunks you can use for riprap and, you know, tide breaks and other rock walls, etc. But uh... so I'm gonna just gonna start working this in, and then just pre-soak that, and then use an eyedropper with some thin matte medium to seal that up. It's coming together nicely this scene having a lot of fun doing it too it's like everything's really going right you know in this area and it's not i can't say that about every section you know because it's the way model railroads are you're going to run into problems it's all about solving the problems and then getting the reward and building confidence and going on to the next challenge you know that's what's great about it and the challenges never end and the rewards never end either okay Okay, so here's some ballast work before it's glued down or pre-soaked and glued. So I like to do ballast a little bit at a time, you know, the same way I paint. I like to treat it like, you know, in the same kind of way, like see the randomness. Like I'm not in a rush to finish that because I don't know what's going to go on exactly in terms of terrain transition. So I just want to get the edges done and get things, you know, get these points done in here and you know there's some points in there I'll do later but I just want to get a feel for this area I don't want to just throw it all down and just soak it down and call it done and you can see there's a little bit of different color here along here more of a soiled type of ballast and then there's more fresh ballast along the edges like it was you know maybe maintained a bit you know by the railroad sort of thing so you know, build in a bit of a story and a history to it right because it's ever changing isn't it all the time so i'm really liking this area again i know i say that but you know that's the beauty of this hobby um you know focus on a small footprint you'll learn way more than if you rush on a big layout you'll learn 10 times more if you do it like this than if you just do big broad sweeps and then get on with it kind of attitude because when you learn to do it on a smaller footprint it doesn't take you as long to get to the problems that you have to solve. <laughs>
<laughs> they'll, you know, they'll show up, you know, in a, in, in a uh, smaller footprint with more going on. And uh, the larger, you know, runs and expanses will be a breeze, right? But anyway, so what I do, I got the little spritzer bottle there. I'll spritz it down and then just dribble in some 50-50 matte medium and water. You don't even need 50%, but I'll just mention this in closing. The reason why I like matte medium is because when I do the points, a lot of people get scared of this. And I know why, because th these get glued in place, and they will with with PVA or carpenter's glue. It can be a hor horrifying experience to glue your points together. But if you use matte medium, diluted heavily, it'll glue the ballast beautifully, and if it does stick, just take some isopropyl alcohol and just pour it on and it'll dissolve it. Move it, it'll dry really fast and your points will be as good as new. You can clean up easier. So that's one of the reasons why I use, you know, matte medium and IPA in combination with all my paint as well. It just all makes so sense. It just makes so much sense, okay? So I couldn't find my eyedropper, so I have this little syringe, which works good. So this is, uh, I'd say about 60% water, 40% matte medium. Okay. And uh, I could thin it even more, and it's just as effective. It'd be just hard, but not brittle. I think I mentioned this before. Um, and the beauty that uh, of matte medium is it's the same, same manufacturer. Uh, as you know all this liquid text acrylic so everything's compatible you won't get any bad reactions Okay, so I'll just show you this quick. So you can see this matte medium. There's 40% matte medium, 60% water. There's a little bit of flow agent in there. Very little. You can see it's almost foamy. It looks like milk, fresh milk out of a dairy cow almost, you know. And I basically just fill up a little plastic syringe. You can get these cheap at the pharmacy or whatever, or you can use an eyedropper. So this has all been pre pre uh spritz with just water and a little bit of flow agent in there so just to get the initial ballast wet so when you put the matte medium solution in it'll just capillary and soak in real nice so these are the points right so i start on the outside like this because if you do it on the outside it's going to seep in between the ties uh, all the way to the middle of the track you don't need to put any in the middle just let it seep in from the sides and avoid the middle because you just don't have to do it like that, okay? Same down here. Wow, I made way more than I need here. I have to figure out where to use that up. But uh, so you can see that's, you know, pretty much done. And see how it's just sort of milky like that? So guaranteed that when this dries, the ballast is sealed, beautiful. And I'll be able to move those, those rock these points back and forth, they'll break loose. Just tweak them a bit. If there's any little tiny pieces of ballast in the way, you can just pick them off with a pick or whatever. And if it's a little more stickier than you like, just apply a little isopropyl alcohol just to loosen it up and move them. The isopropyl alcohol will, will drain the matte medium off the top of the tie and under the rail down into the ballast again and it'll dry. You just keep doing that a few times and your points are beautiful. Okay? Okay.